A Bass Geek here, and I'm going to tell you about my favorite topwater bait, and I'm going to tell you why for the summertime. That's right, guys. I'm going to talk to you about my favorite topwater bait. Now, it's not this one, even though this is kind of the same thing. This is the Boyo. It's a new bait from Hedden, one of my very favorites. I love that bait. I'm going to use that because I'm not going to use your bait and uh, take a chance of... Well, A, opening it. I want you to have the bait brand new because I got a whole bunch of these. And B, uh, you know, I don't want to take a chance of throwing it in a tree and not getting it back. It does happen, even to good old Bass Geek. But first, I want to talk to you guys. Now, I am behind. If you can't tell by my voice, I am sick or I got sick. I'm feeling better <laughs> as I cough. I'm feeling better, but I told you guys I was going to do a monthly box, right? So I kind of walked away from the subscription companies. Not that I don't believe in them. You know, I love the subscription companies. Those are great ways to get you out of your comfort zone. Like I always say, if you're an old head, get you out of your comfort zone to try new bait. If you're a beginner, to kind of build your arsenal in a good way. Now, this box is not going to be, you can't buy it. I mean, you can go buy all the parts of it on Tackle Warehouse. I will put links, or if it's not on Tackle Warehouse, wherever it is. But I will put links down below. Now, they will help me out. If you do, you do. You don't, you don't. You don't want to try them. That's cool. I don't care. But we're giving away the Bass Geek box every single month. This is the May box. <laughs> yes, I know it's June. Um, we're a little behind. We're going to do a June box too, but this is a box for May. And believe it or not, a lot of it, because May is that transition from deep to shallow, or reverse that, shallow to deep. There's a lot in this box that will work in either or. So let's go through the box first. We're going to pick a bait out. We're not going to do anything any different than what we've always done on these giveaways. We're going to pick one bait out. We're going to do a how-to on it. Now, all these baits are hand-picked by me. So basically, I went to Tackle Warehouse. I picked out these baits. Now, what I like about this is it's not necessarily the baits that I always use. So I get to try out some new baits and really look at some new baits too, just like you guys do. And I hope that's kind of what this box is going to be about we're going to pull out some baits that you know may be the type or the style that i like to use but maybe not from the company or the brand and we'll get to learn about some new brands out there or some new baits out there or we'll get to learn about the same old baits that we've always knew about right so either way it goes somebody's going to win a box now this is fifty dollars worth of baits and uh, I'm not going to lie, man, I think you guys are going to get a heck of a box. So number one, we're going to start out. And I'll tell you what I'm thinking as I go. One of my favorite baits in the spring to summer is an underspin. Now, this is the new Gamakatsu underspin. This is a half ounce four alt, okay? Uh I wish they'd put a little bigger spring on these, but it seems like every company puts a small spring. Doesn't hold your bait, actually tears your bait. That's one thing I can say. Now, what I did is I got you some of the Pro, I believe this is this is a Scottsboro by Yum. This is a 3.5 inch, which would go on this. This would kind of be my go-to deal right here. This is the Pro Blue Pearl from Scottsboro. And uh, you can also use these on Alabama rigs. And there are six of them in there. So I'm hooking you up with a six pack. Now you guys know I love to fish a swim bait, especially during the summertime when they get out deep. Now don't worry, all summer long, I'm not gonna throw swim baits in all the time. Maybe, we'll see. But uh, I went ahead and got you a head. This is the Gambler head. This is the goat screw lock head. Again, the screw lock on this is a little bit bigger. Uh, you know, it's just so bad because of the hollow body swim baits. When you have a small screw lock, it doesn't get enough bite around the edges. So again, that's my only complaint. I really like this head. You know, it's got two sets of eyes. I might pop the eyes out if I'm fishing a bait that's already got eyes. Uh, but a lot of times I don't care about that. This one, the swim bait that I've got and I actually wanted to try these. I'd never seen them before. 
And these are the Ducket, the BD-5s. Now this is, I believe, um, Gizzard Shad. So it's got a little bit of green down the back of it. You've got uh, five of these. Good looking baits, hollow bodies, good baits. But you know, I've never tried those, so I, I actually popped them open and kind of felt them. They're good and soft. Now, because this was a May box, one of the things I love to throw in May is a spinner bait. I fish a lot of clear water, so the War Eagle is a, one of my favorites. And this is a tandem willow leaf, one of my favorites again in clear water. And it's a gold and silver blade. Good transparent shad color, so great in that clear water. Another thing that I love during early May, early to mid-May, even right now, like, I mean, it, it's June the 1st when we're shooting this, and we've seen a ton of shad or fry garters in this lake. This lake's always a little behind. And so one of the things I love is this time of year is this little bait right here. This is the Mossback Shiner. It is the uh, Shadow Wrap Shad. It's got a great shad sort of body to it but it's a slow float so i can throw it around logs and brush and really dig it down in between two branches of a brush pile or a blow down and let it kind of twitch 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 down in between them and float back up a lot of times you wouldn't believe how many fish that'll call out of those lay downs and out of those brush piles so a great this is one of my favorite probably my favorite post spawn uh, jerk baits and I'm telling you it gets destroyed uh, I like the deeper version I'm gonna give you guys the shallower diving version because I know everybody don't fish a hundred foot deep like I do last but not least of what we're going to talk about today this is my favorite summer walking bait now what I love about this bait is that you can tie regular knot to it and you can fish it very very quickly okay you can tie a loop knot to it and you can fish it very slow over deeper clear water this is my color guys it's translucent it's called uh pearl melon it's a bait that you guys uh, it's the same sort of color that i use in for largemouth and clear bodies of water that i use on my spy baits a lot too i did a whole color video we'll put that up here anyway so it's translucent but it's got a nice subtle natural flash to it so let's talk about it oh wait and as always in all the boxes you get a couple of cool stickers yes since we bought 50 dollars from tackle warehouse you get a 50 dollar tackle warehouse and you get the coolest sticker of them all a bass geek sticker that's right i mean maybe i'm biased but you know I think it's the coolest sticker of them all. So let's talk about this thing. I want to tell you why this to me is the best spring topwater bait. Number one, this is a one knocker, okay? In clear water, in calm water like it is today, number one, we always know go to translucence, okay? Translucence catch bass. That being said, I think it's a combination of the sound because I've got a, I've got one that's silent and I've got one that has multiple BBs in it. And they don't seem to go after those as much. But that one knocker, I don't know for a fact that it's a tungsten ball in there. But when you're working that bait real slow, tie to loop knot, again, that's another video that I'll put, you know, up here somewhere and down in the description. When you're walking that bait, you can hear it at the apex. And that's really the cadence that I walk it when I'm fishing calm, clear water. I like that really wide glide. And I can get that out of this bait. You can't get it out of a lot of other baits. Even some of the some of the higher end baits, especially if they've got a cupped mouth, they don't glide as well as like a pointed nose bait does. So they'll spit and they'll just stop. Uh, something else that you can do, now it will restrict a little bit of the glide, but I like to replace this sometimes, sometimes with a dressed treble. So the back one with a feather treble, white. 
It's the only color I use generally is white. So let's talk about rod reel line setup. This is my favorite topwater rod and reel, okay? With treble hooks, I generally like, even topwater, I generally like a softer rod. It keeps me from pulling the bait away from the fish when they come up and hit it. Uh, I like mono. I fish straight mono. You can fish a braid, which of course I I have braid canine to a mono leader. And so that mono leader is generally 14 pound. I like to be able to cast as far as I can. And uh, 14 will keep it up, but canine braid to a 14 pound and generally my leader is going to be pretty long uh it's going to be 10 feet or so this rod is an akuma guide select it's a medium fast that's what i like a good medium fast it doesn't have so much tip that you can't really get a little bit of snap if i want to walk it fast and it's got enough tip that i'm not pulling the bait away when i get overly excited from the bass uh, and again, one of my favorite reels in the world, this is the Lose Custom Pro, and this is a 6, 8 to 1. One of my favorite moving bait gear ratios, 6, 8 to 1 right here. You'll see me use it a million times over. This, this reel right here, very light. This combo is very light, and this reel casts a country mile. So let's jump out on the water, and I'm going to show you a couple of retrieves, one for deep water, one for shallow water, and one for a shallow to deep transition. So I'm going to show you my three cadences, okay? Uh, this is for deep water. We're going to make a long cast. We're going to let it sit there kind of like you do a popper. Reel up the slack. Reel up the slack. And then we're just going to work it. As soon as it gets to the top of its movement, we move it. We're not working it fast. Remember, now if, if we're fishing over smallmouth, that's one thing. We might fish it a little faster. Largemouth are like me. They're fat. They're, if you run something over their head and they're 15, 20, 30 foot down, they're going to look at it going. They might come up, and then by the time it's gone, they're just they're going to go right back down to the bottom. So the thing about fishing it over top of largemouth is it's got to be a slow consistent cadence now retrieve number two now this cadence if i'm fishing for smallmouth in open water that are busting or if i'm fishing for sometimes largemouth that are busting largemouth always tend to like it slower for some for whatever reason or if i'm fishing a flat area okay so if i'm fishing a flat area i'm going to move it a lot faster we're gonna move that bait as quickly as we can move it. And still getting a good walk out of it. Now, we can always impart some stop and goes. Smallmouth love a stop and go. You can throw it out there, really work it hard, and then pause and then just get it started back up again. Smallmouth love that retrieve. I'm gonna give you one more retrieve, and this retrieve is a retrieve that I like fishing for largemouth that are on steep banks like this one. So a lot of times if, if they're on a steep drop off point, I'll throw it up there shallow and make it look like something fleeing the bank. So we're moving really quickly. I'll give it just a split second pause. And then we'll start walking it nice and slowly again. 
a lot of times when I throw a top water, a walking bait right to the bank. I just want to, I want it moving. Moving, moving, moving. Especially because this is clear water. I don't want them getting a good look at it. We'll give it a slight pause and a nice slow retrieve over the deeper water. So how are we going to give away the inaugural Bass Geek box? Let's make it simple. Hashtag Bass Geek in the comment section and you'll be entered to win. Now, for you guys that don't win, it does support the channel. If you see a bait or you like the whole box, you can go out to Tackle Warehouse, follow those links. It does help the channel. It doesn't cost you a dime extra, not a dime. So go out there, check out those baits and uh, see what you think about them and let me know. So as always, questions and comments in the comment section below, hashtag Bass Geek to win the May box. The June box is already ordered and on its way. So hopefully we'll get that one out in time. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you ring that bell. And as always, you guys rock.